Thanks, Carl. When, when are you planning to uh, release the movie? Well, the DVD is going to be released around about the middle of the year, June, July, perhaps late July. We're trying to delay that release a little bit so that there's maximum opportunity for secular broadcast channels to take it up. We have a distribution company in the UK who signed on quite excitedly when they saw it. And in fact, we've had some you know, secular folk show great interest in the movie. We hope that they won't, when they suddenly realise that it's uh, creationists that are involved in it somehow, we hope they won't sort of draw back. But uh, we're just very thankful to God at the interest that's been shown. What so, sort of reaction are, we going to, uh, are you anticipating from uh, people like Richard Dawkins and others? You know what, I wouldn't like to sort of preempt that because, I mean, a, a lot of these guys, leaving Dawkins to one side, you know, many of them come at it from all sorts of different angles and some of them are worthy of respect, some less so. And what we're hoping is that everybody will find this thought provoking. We're also hoping that it's, it's very gentle fairness will sort of catch people off guard and that it can't be sort of easily written off because it doesn't fit the caricature of the, you know, the tub-thumping, Bible-bashing person. And uh, we think there's in it, something in it for everyone. In fact, at recent pastors' pre-screenings in parts of the United Kingdom, we had pastors from a whole range of positions on Genesis come along and, and all of them said that they could endorse the film. But it wasn't as if, you know, we, we could say to ourselves, well, what have we done wrong? You know, is it too wimpy or somehow? Because it really isn't, because it asks and probes and it asks those hard questions that many people just don't ask anymore. And it's not even afraid of tackling issues like, you know, the whole idea of deep time and the millions of years and so on. And the thing that encouraged us was that one of these pastors, before one of these pre-screenings, was, was talking to his uh, colleagues and was waxing you know, bad things against the creationists and, and ridiculing and rubbishing creation. And at the end of the movie, he said, I've changed my mind. And he grabbed a pile of books and said, I, I want to read these. And so that's exciting for us. So what motivated you to make the film in the first place? Well, the idea came from... Uh, the idea for the film came from a friend and colleague of mine, Dr. Emile Silvestre, a PhD geologist from CMI uh, Canada. And uh, Emile said to me, this Darwin year is coming up. Why don't we retrace the voyage of the Beagle? And, uh, and he pointed out something that I'd known but I'd sort of buried in my mind, which was that Darwin was more of a geologist originally than he was a biologist. And that he went on this voyage with Lyell's book on geology with all of this slow and gradual philosophy there. And every time he saw a geological feature, he would interpret it through the lenses of this philosophy. And that in turn reinforced the idea of deep time in his mind, which reinforced the foundations of his evolutionary thinking. And Emile sort of put forward an idea that maybe we could sort of challenge those geological issues. And at that stage, he wasn't thinking of Galapagos and so on. And I thought to myself, well, you can't have a thing about the voyage of the Beagle without the Galapagos, without biology, without natural selection. So I thought we could do all that together. But it seemed almost impossible to achieve, sort of daunting and breathtaking. And uh, then as the year of Darwin came closer and we could see some of the things that they were gearing up to do, we could see that it was going to be a year in which Christians were going to be put on the back foot more than ever. And so I just sat down with uh, one of our guys at CMI Australia, Ben Suter, he was our audiovisual manager at the time, and I said, Ben, how can we do this, you know? So we started talking and brainstorming and he had a lot of contacts and got them together and, and uh, the, the most important thing was that we didn't want to sacrifice quality and we, we had a worldwide fundraising appeal and we were able to raise about three quarters of this, we, we, we raised all that we asked for but we didn't ask for enough because in movies you always go over budget so I found out. And uh, so we're just so excited and it uh, wouldn't matter if we were, you know, right down to the last 10 cents. We just think it's fantastic, the opportunity that this film presents. How much has the film actually cost and are you anticipating getting a return on that investment? We stopped counting when it reached a, a million US dollars and that's, that's serious. And, and uh, no, we don't think we'll get all that back. But the main purpose of it is broadcast sales, like secular broadcasters. Because you imagine if two million people in one viewing just happen to see it, um, if only 10% of those two million people have their minds sufficiently open to consider the question, if only 10% of those then start looking, and there's all that information out there, like on, on our website and, and uh, many other websites and so on, and if only 10% of those come through and become believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, 
then that's in one fell swoop, that's 2,000 conversions. I mean, that's terrific ministry. And I, I was amazed when I saw that if you added up the maximum that you could get from broadcast sales, secular broadcast sales right around the world, it probably comes to less than half of what we spent on the film. So I thought to myself, why do secular people make these sort of movies? And really what happens is they make a partnership with the channel and the channel puts up most of the money but then it con controls the content. And of course we couldn't have that. So it's really been a, a, a unique, if you like, ministry exercise. But we see potential spin-offs in all sorts of directions. We see that, that um, people are going to be interested in this issue, perhaps more than ever before, as a result of it being a, a crossover into the mainstream, as it were. So why should uh, Christians and why should people actually generally get behind this film? Well, the more that Christians, for example, get behind it, the more it's going to get credibility in the secular world. So, I mean, we're excited about the fact that Condios Entertainment have been able to arrange its release in cinemas across Australia and New Zealand. And uh, that's fantastic. And that's going to happen sort of more often with Christian films if the secular cinemas can see that it's supported. And what's more, it's an incredible opportunity to take your friends along. You can see it in high definition and surround sound. and. And, I mean, let's face it, how many non-corny, if I can say that, Christian movies do you know where you'd be really excited to take a friend along and you'd be fairly sure that it would really gently and professionally challenge their worldview and make them ready for you to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with them? Not many, and uh, I think this is a unique opportunity. So the more Christians that get behind it, the more it'll have like a cascading effect. It's uh, not so much a, uh, a, an action film or a drama or anything, it's more of a docu-movie docu or something like that. Do you want to make any comments about that? Yeah, I guess you're right. It's more of a docudrama or docu-movie. It's got these period reenactments and interviews with people and there's enough you know, landscapes and glaciers and high seas shots and so on to, to make it interesting but it's been designed as a documentary primarily, but a documentary that has an element of infotainment about it, as they say these days, you know, informs people and entertains them at the same time. Good, congratulations, and uh, hope it all goes very well for you. Appreciate it, thank you. Thank you.